Hello everyone, this is João from Salmonella Place and today we're going to discuss protein structure. So we're going to talk about the structure that these organic molecules named proteins form and if you have any question of how proteins or what proteins are, I suggest you look at our tutorial on proteins here on Salmonella Place. Now, proteins are usually found in the 3D structure such as this one here, this really complex structure, 3D. This is how you usually find proteins. But as you know, and as I mentioned before, proteins are usually found, or the building blocks of proteins start, of course, are amino acids and they bound, bind to one another with peptide bonds and they form this let's say a necklace full of amino acids and this is a 2D structure now what we will understand here on this tutorial is how you go from this 2D structure to one that looks like this and in order to do so, you have to understand that protein structures assume four different levels. And these are the levels that we're going to discuss in more detail here on this tutorial. The first one is primary structure, second secondary, third tertiary, and finally fourth quaternary structure. So what I'm going to show you first is a beautiful illustration showing the four levels of protein structure going from a simple, a more simple one, the primary structure, to the more complex one, the quaternary structure here on the bottom. Now we will go into more detail on each level and the first one that I want to discuss is the primary structure. And the primary structure is basically the amino acid sequence as you can see here on this illustration so as you know there are 20 amino acids and the amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and when these come together they bind to one another I'm drawing here what you can also see on the left so when these amino acids come together they bind through peptide bonds. So they form peptide bonds and they form this 2D structure that you can see here looking like a necklace, a bead necklace and this is what we call or define as the primary structure. Now there is an important thing uh, uh, to say about this primary structure that at the higher levels of protein structure that we're going to see later on, the tertiary and quaternary, there will be local coiling and folding that give the molecule its final functional shape. Because remember, proteins can be, become functional once they assume a certain shape, usually the 3D shape that we know. That is which amino acids are at which locations on a polypeptide chain. So these sequ this sequence that you see here, the sequence of amino acids, will determine the bonds uh, that will be formed later on and that will influence the, in the coiling and the folding that will happen in the protein structure. Very important. So the properties associated with a precise sequence of amino acids will definitely determine how the protein can twist and fold. And that, that way will adopt a specific stable structure that distinguishes it from the every other protein. So this sequence here is crucial. And as you probably know from genetics, DNA will definitely code for this sequence that you see here. So when DNA, where a particular gene is converted into a protein, the sequence here is definitely important, will be defined on the DNA sequence as well. As we move on to the secondary structure, we will see two subtypes, let's say, of secondary structure, the beta sheet 
and the alpha helix. So as you, I mentioned previously, the primary structure is when the amino acids are binding to one another. Now they will start forming these structures, these uh, alpha helixes that you see here. And these beta sheets that look a little bit like a pleated shirt or an accordion. And what will happen, these structures are sustained or held by hydrogen bonds between the amino acids. Now, still on the secondary structure, I would like to go a little bit in more detail on the alpha helix and beta sheet. So I will erase this structure here and show you the alpha helix in a little bit more detail. So you can see here that this secondary structure is clearly a spiral shape. So this is the alpha helix secondary structure and it's clearly spiral shaped and there is a turn every 3.5 amino acids as you see here as well there will be one turn completed for every 3.5 amino acids I guess that's like an approximate value the third thing to know is that this type of structure is pretty common in insoluble fibrous structural proteins such as keratin and one important thing to know is that keratins are found in hair, hooves, and feathers. Now, hair can be stretched because stretching requires that only the hydrogen bonds of the alpha helix, not the covalent bonds, can be broken. And they can be broken by water, for example. You see here these hydrogen bonds happening between the NH and the CO of every amino acid. So this is what you see happening between here and this is what helps stabilize this structure here. Now once you introduce water for example, when you wash your hair, those hydrogen bonds can be then broken and when tension on the hair is released both the hydrogen bonds and the helix will then reform once you dry your hair. The second type of secondary structures that you find in proteins is this one that you see here and this is the beta sheet also known as a beta pleated sheet because it does look like a pleated shirt or an accordion. Why? Because as you can see here, these are linear parallel primary structures. Simplifying, these are primary structures or groups of amino acids, also known as polypeptides, that form H bonds or hydrogen bonds, and they are parallel to one another. And they form these pleated let's say this shape here, these pleated beta sheets. And the hydrogen bonds then are happening between these parallel structures. So you will find a few of these hydrogen bonds. Now one important thing to know as well is that these hydrogen bonds are also happening between the NH and the CO of every amino acid and you can clearly see these hydrogen bonds right here happening and stabilizing this structure. Now one important thing to add is that many, pro many proteins contain regions of both alpha helix and beta pleated sheets in the same polypeptide chain. So now we're going to move on to the tertiary structure and this is when the protein starts to clearly form a three-dimensional or 3D structure, as you can read here. 
So this is the first point I wanted to write, so I have all written down so you can just follow rather than do it in real time. The second point that is very important to know about tertiary structure is this one here, the interactions between the R groups of the amino acids. As you know, there are 20 different amino acids. They have the same backbone, but they have different R groups, which make them of course, different. And these R groups are then be, are going to be found in the polypeptide chain and they're going to interact, they're going to have different types of chemical interactions which will help define this tertiary structure as you see here. Now this is the list of, of interactions that you find in the tertiary structure. And the first one is covalent disulfide bonds. Remember, disulfide bonds, if you remember from um, looking into two cysteine residues, which will be able to hold a folded peptide in place. The second one is hydrophobic side chains, which can aggregate together in the interior of the protein and away from water, of course, folding the polypeptide in the process. Third one is van der, van der Waals, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. This it can help stabilize the close interactions between hydrophobic residues. Now the last one that you need to know is ionic interactions and this one will occur between positively and negatively charged side chains buried deep within a protein away from water and forming what we call a salt bridge. Now one important thing to know is that, and I forgot to tell you before I started discussing the interactions between the R groups, is that when we talked about the secondary structure, what kept the secondary structure or stabilized a secondary structure is a different type of interactions known as H bonds. Now on the tertiary structure you have these occurring. Now still on the tertiary structure I want to talk about a couple more things that are important to mention when we talk about this level of protein structure. And the first one is that in tertiary structure we need to talk about domains. And domains, as I have written down already, are basic units of tertiary structure. And in order to show you exactly what a domain is, I need, I have a drawing here that I did, which I think will help illustrate what I'm talking about. This is a domain structure of insulin receptor. And what you have here, I'm going to try to show you that there are several, this is a protein, as you can see, and here is a membrane, a cell's membrane. Now as you can see, this, these structures that you see here, these lines are working as a protein, they work as an insulin receptor, but there are different parts of this protein, the domains, that work in different or have different functions. So the one that you see here, this is the hormone binding. This is the hormone binding domain. This is where the hormone, the insulin, will bind. Now what you have here is a, I can add here, it's a trans membrane domain which goes across the membrane. We don't have to go into detail of what they exactly do, but just to have to give you an idea that these domains, even though they're part of the same protein, they have different functions. And this area here, this structure here, this part, is also a domain and it's the catalytic domain. Now, the other thing I would like to say about domains is that they're functioning part of a protein, like I mentioned here, 
And the, a protein can have multiple domains, as you already seen here, and I showed you on this insulin receptor. Now, what I have written here is an important part that I need to add, and this is a group of proteins called chaperones. And chaperone proteins are able to do or perform correct folding of other proteins. So you will see later on when we talk about these type, these group of proteins, or when we talk about protein folding, for example, that these proteins will help other proteins get to this level of protein structure. Now we are arriving at the final and most complex protein structure level and this is the quaternary structure and the quaternary structure is simply when different polypeptide chains known as subunits interact with one another and form the entire protein. Now I have an example here a very famous one hemoglobin which carries oxygen in your blood. And one important thing and very interesting thing to know is that depending on these interactions that are occurring between these subunits, and as you can see, hemoglobin has four subunits, as you can see here, four different types of subunits. And these subunits are able to carry oxygen molecules and the interactions between these subunits will help the protein perform its function. Now I have a few examples of interactions that will be occurring between these subunits right here. Now one important thing I would like to add just for your information is that as hemoglobin binds oxygen, what will happen is that the four subunits shift their relative position slightly, which will then change the quaternary structure. Now, ionic bonds will be broken and will expose buried side chains that enhance the binding of additional oxygen molecules. That's how this molecule here, this protein, will work or perform its function. Now the structure changes again when the hemoglobin releases its oxygen molecules to the cells of your body.